a member of our Platinum Club. He is not a petty thief. Hang on a minute, Henry. But let's just assume I'm wrong, shall we? Okay. So I was watching Paddington 2, great film by the way. If you want to print out pictures, stick them up on boards, draw lines between them with pieces of string, be my guest. It looks cool. It is cool in the right circumstances, but it isn't that practical really for cyber and OSINT investigations and things like that. So what I'm going to show you here is a tool that is useful for all those circumstances and it's called Multigo. And it's made by a company called Paterva. Let's jump straight into it. This is Multigo. It is free and it's a really cool tool. You will come across it in both a cybersecurity career and an intelligence career. It's kind of a go-to tool. Similar tools are things like i2 Analyst Notebook, which isn't free. And you might not arrive at this screen whenever it first boots up. You might be asked to register and sign in. Please go ahead and do that. And then you'll end up somewhere here. And what this is, is the start page on the left hand side. And we can turn that off by clicking start page. And then we're left with the transform hub. And if we want to get back to the transform hub later, we click transforms, transform hub, and that's how you arrive back here. Transforms are basically plugins. So Multigo provides basic functionality out of the box, but all these other companies, all these cyber intelligence companies and internet companies and OSINT companies have their own little plugins. Some of them are paid, many of them are paid, and we can filter through them here at the top. Now, some of the ones that stand out to me are things like Flashpoint, CrowdStrike, Alien Vault, Abuse IP Database, Polyswarm, uh, attack MISP, Hybrid Analysis, Passive Total, Mandiant, which is owned by Google, Intel 471, Grey Noise, Kaspersky. These are all the big brands. Varus Total, that's owned by Google as well. Zero Fox, Shodan. I have a Shodan lifetime membership, which you can get on Black Friday, Cyber Monday. I think that's in November time, something like that. It usually costs about five bucks then instead of 45 for lifetime membership. So. I have my API key for Shodan baked into this little plugin here. So yeah, it's a pretty comprehensive tool and it's widely supported by all of these big vendors. Let's go and click on the investigate tab. You can see here at the top, you get this ribbon that looks like an old version of Microsoft Office. This is your sort of menu button. In here, if you go to tools, you can see open example graph. There we go. That is our example graph. The graph is this bit in the middle here. On the right, you have this overview panel where you can move around. If I zoom in using the scroll wheel and I'm really close, I can then move around using this overview panel on the side, scroll wheel again to zoom back out. And if we zoom out, you can see a key appears here with colors on it, websites, MX records, domains, DNS names and things. So, left clicking and dragging selects these entities that's what they're called and if you want to select the link you'll notice when i click it actually doesn't select the links so what if you want to delete a link what if you want to say that this isn't actually connected to this how do you delete it well you'll see here on the investigate tab you have this entity selection mode that's what we're currently in we're selecting entities if you want to select a link you change it and it turns to link selection mode. Now when we drag it, we select the links and if we delete those with command backspace on the Mac, then it deletes the links between them. I'll just command Z to undo that. So that's one thing that might throw you off when you start playing with Multigo is how do I select these entities or links? That is how you do it. And it is really useful. If you don't have this capability, and some of the other tools that I've played with don't have the capability to do this, and I really get frustrated trying to manage the graph as it grows and grows to then delete stuff. So it is actually a really good way to work. If we select one of these entities and right click on it, this is where you can run your transforms. So earlier we saw the transforms hub, here it is. And I've got a whole bunch of these installed. 
So here's the have I been pwned transform, which checks for breached passwords. If we go back to our example graph, I'm just using my right mouse button to move across here. That's how you sort of pan. Use your right mouse. If we add email, we can drag a new email entity onto the graph, double click it, and we'll type gary at garyrodell.com. And if I right click it, we get these transforms. If you just quickly look at this, you can see have I been pwned, hunter, OCCRP. If we right click on this one, we get a whole bunch of different results here. And if you click into all transforms, you then go back by clicking this back arrow. So this is the sort of top menu. And this menu will change dynamically based on the entity type you're on. So this is an email address. So if I click it and right click, I get Hunter, which is an email address hunting tool. I've covered that previously on the channel. I'll put a link in the description if you're interested in hunting for emails. And you get Have I Been Pwned, which is the breach information. So let's click Have I Been Pwned. Get all breaches of an email address. Get all pastes featuring the email address. Oh, this is cool. Let's just do that one. You see down the bottom here, the transform is running. And it says that it found this email address in the canva.com breach. Yep, Canva got breached a while back. I know that this is a false positive for me because this email address isn't the one that I use for Canva. So I don't know why that's in there. Let's right click again and go to have I been pwned and look at the pastes featuring the email address. Here we go. What does this say? Have I been pwned not listed within pastes? See, my email address isn't listed inside any of the pastes, the dumps that people put online on things like paste bin where they just paste all the email addresses and passwords that compromised. Mine's not in there. Happy days. So if we do this, we can hold command backspace and delete those two items. We can delete this one as well, actually. That is how we move around. Right click to move the graph, left click to do our selections. Don't forget your entity versus your link selection, your overview panel here. If you select a whole bunch of items, you get a little spreadsheet type thing on the right hand side, which is useful. And on the left, you have the entity palette where you can drag new things on. And this is huge. There's so many things in here. There's rocket launchers in here. There's churches, there's drug dealers, there's terrorists. Look, here's a terrorist. Sex offenders, lawyers, gang members, children, aliases, email addresses, Facebook profiles, YouTube, all of it. It's all in here. Here's weapons, look biological weapon. So if I zoom in on these two, by the way, you'll notice that I click first and then I click and drag to move. And there's a reason for that. When you want to draw lines between things, so let's say John Doe here, the terrorist, made this biological weapon, anthrax. If we select him and then we try and click and drag to draw the line, it moves him. So you have to click away, and if it's unselected, you click and hold and drag and let go, and it creates the line. So that's another little nuance that you'll have to figure out. I spend a lot of time clicking away and clicking back onto things in this tool. So we've connected the dots with those two, and maybe John Doe launched the anthrax attack against GitHub, which would be terrible. If we zoom back out, Let's see if we can look at this in a different way, this data here. I'm just gonna close the transform panel at the bottom to give us a bit more breathing room. You can see these tiny little icons here in the layout panel. And we're currently on this one, which is set layout mode to block. We can change it to be hierarchical and the whole graph moves, things move around, okay? Set layout mode to circular, puts it in a ring which is kind of interesting. So these are just different ways to help you visualize what's going on. And there's more, there's this one, which is organic. 
so it just creates an organic diagram. It's kind of hard to describe other than calling it organic. And you'll also see one called interactive organic. Everything becomes looser and when you move things around they all sort of flow a little bit. And this is good because if you're in normal organic mode and you start to add more entities onto the screen like this, click away and then connect the dots like this. Here we go. It doesn't change. But if I put it into interactive organic mode and add more things to the chart, you can see they start to just float around in space. They automatically start to pull the little icons and things around. Let's take a look at these last view options. This one shows the graph, which is what we're looking at. This one is a list, which is the same as the little table that you get on the right. If I select these, you get the list over here on the right. And if we go back to these ones, these all have balls with little arrows going into them. And this is another way of seeing key points on the chart. So you kind of have to hover over these and play with them. Balls by diverse descent. I'm no mathematician, so I have no idea what that means. All I know is that some of the balls stand out on this screen and I'm going to go and look at them. And if I zoom in, we can see Multigo's mail protection on Outlook. We can see this IP address, a few domains and things that lets those pop out. What's this one? Ball size by links. So this is looking at the number of links into and out of a ball, I guess, and prioritizing them. Multigo links to everything. It's the big daddy. It's the center of it all. So I guess all of the links add back up into Multigo's ball size. So this is probably quite a useful view. This one is based on incoming links, outgoing links, and ball size by rank. Okay, what's this last one? Ball size by weight. Okay, really useful. Just different ways to visualize data. If you can get a dump of DDoS data from a vendor or from a website or something and put it in here, it's really, really useful because you'll see thousands and thousands of IP addresses all targeting a single IP address or a few IP addresses and you'll be able to quickly identify the victims from the attackers on the graph. Quite useful. So there's a few different ways of selecting things on the screen and making selections in tools like this is really important because you don't want to be individually clicking and holding shift and having to select all these little things there's a much better way. So let's click on Multigo and let's say we want to select its children. Well, we just add children here and it selects all the children of Multigo. And you'll notice Multigo itself is still selected. If we click add children again, it'll add their children into it. So if you just wanted to export this data, you could now do that. Pretty cool. You can also select neighbors. So if we click this one and choose select neighbors, you can see it adds everything around it. And then we can add their children if we want. Pretty cool. You can select based on bookmarks. You'll notice that if I zoom out, you can see these ones have little blue bookmarks on them here. Green, yellow. I'm just clicking it to cycle through different colors. And if we select bookmarked and then choose red, we get that one because it's the only one. Nice. So that is how you make some selections. Let's go into the view menu. This is just a duplication of these buttons here. So, uh, and this is all around the selection modes. So if we do this and do an organic selection, it sorts those into an organic selection. Again, this is useful whenever you want to group things together, say like this, and maybe you want it to be circular for some reason, and yeah, you want to put it over there. It's up to everybody how they want to display their data. You might put this down here and then draw a nice pretty box underneath it and put a label in the corner that says activity on a certain date, for example. It'll also let you align things, so you can align left, align top, 
horizontally, vertically, etc. So that is selections. Entities, you can come in here and you can manage entities until your heart is content. This is a minefield, this part of Multico. And uh, if we just open up, I don't know, this Facebook one, you can see here there's a display name. That's what it shows up as on the left hand panel. And the description is the bit that's underneath. The unique name type is already set and its category is set, but you can change it if you'd like. And it does some inheritance. So it has a base entity that it inherits things from. And you can add all these different properties and things. So if you want to add a new link, like a URL or something, you can come in and put that in here and define your own uh, entities. It's quite comprehensive to say the least. Let's look at collections. So collections is when things get simplified on the graph. So you see all this at the top? These are all these web addresses that sit underneath this Multico at the top. Now, if we turn collections back on, there we go. See, they're all gone. So that's what collections does. And you can simplify the graph by dragging this. So if we disable collections, it's all off. If we then do this, it turns it back on and it sets it to 90. So if there's more than 90, it groups them together. If there's less than 90, it splits them apart. Show collections shows you all the collections. So you can see there when you click that button, it actually highlights that collection. And if you double click it, you can get this big list of all the things inside it. And this just makes your graph a lot easier to use when you've got loads and loads of entities on the graph. Then you got machines and collaboration. I won't cover those here. They're a bit more on the advanced side, so maybe we'll cover that in a later video. So this is import and export, and this is really handy. If you have a spreadsheet and it needs to be formatted in a particular way, you can just import the spreadsheet into Multigo and it'll make all the connections. And it's basically a spreadsheet that would have multiple entries for the same entity. For example, I have two kids, so I need to be listed twice. Gary Riddell, Gary Riddell, and then the names of my kids need to be beside me, yeah? And what it'll do is it won't duplicate entities on the graph, it'll link Gary Riddell to the two kids, and that's what it does. So there's a lot, quite a lot of duplication that happens when you build the spreadsheet, and there's a, a tutorial on how to do this. Um, I think if you click import, yeah, here it is. So there's a whole tutorial here on exactly like how to do it. You get these different connectivity types. I think tree is the one that I used for that example I just gave you. And here you go. So you can see Sam Samson is duplicated multiple times here because that person's connected to all of these people. So that's what I was getting at. But it's pretty cool. It does a really good job of it, but your spreadsheet needs to be formatted properly. It's one of those things you need to go and have a play with it first, make mistakes, and eventually you'll get the hang of it. It's really nice. So that is importing a third party table. You can export a graph to a table. So we can export this with its links to a table by clicking that button. You can produce images, reports, XML files, and then you can manage your windows here. That's it. That is Multigo in a nutshell. It's a really powerful tool. The only way you're gonna learn it is not by watching me. You're gonna have to go and play with it. So I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you learned something. I'm going to go and remake the graph from Paddington 2 in Multigo.